Hello and welcome back to Engineers Escape. My name's Jake, and today I want to talk about issues I've encountered and show you why my drone went from this to this to this. This drone has seen several variations throughout its life this far. This is the first version. It had the curved factory landing legs, the foldable GPS stand, unbalanced propellers, and a narrow field of view FPV camera. So why did I change it? I had problems. The main reason was crash resilience. One, the landing legs broke on the first crash. It was also very difficult to land with these. The landing legs got in the way of everything I tried to mount to the bottom plate, like the gimbal and battery. This also led to difficulty trying to get the center of gravity in the middle of the drone. Two, almost every time I crashed, the drone would flop upside down and break the GPS stand. Many times this led to the GPS solders breaking on the flight controller. I also didn't have enough slack in the wires to easily remove the top plate whenever I needed to access the flight controller. 3. The initial FPV camera didn't have a wide enough field of view and was difficult to pilot. Speaking of FPV, the video most times was terrible. The mixture of vibration, a bad PID tune, and electromagnetic interference made it nearly impossible to use. I also learned the importance of using thread locker. Vibrations led me to lose several screws which then needed to be replaced, particularly in the gimbal. This is the second version. I learned about the importance of balancing propellers and how much of a difference having less vibrations really makes. Woohoo! I removed the GPS stand, built custom landing legs, moved the VTX away from the RX, added the wide-angle Foxier FPV camera, and moved the battery back to offset the weight of the gimbal in the front. Many of these changes were to get the drone to fly better, decrease vibration, and try to eliminate video noise. So why did I change it again? Some issues were persisting. Try as I might, some vibrations were still getting to the gimbal, HD camera, and VTX that caused jello in the HD footage and static in the FPV footage. The gimbal also kept jolting out of place and pointing the camera a different direction mid-flight. That was not fun. Earlier in the series, I showed the yellow 4K camera and told you I didn't like it. I've since realized that the main issue was the video bitrate. The low bitrate of 8 megabits per second on the yellow camera makes for a poor choice because it smears or breaks up any moving shots badly. Audio desyncs were also common, along with the timestamps being reset every time the battery died. On crashes, the gimbal would break at the plastic standoffs, and the rubber damping balls would come out of place and get lost. The top metal gimbal plate also made it difficult to access the reset button. This is important because many times the gimbal wouldn't initialize correctly on power-up, and the button must be pressed to try again. The newly lowered GPS unit's compass would not show the proper heading while in flight and made certain assisted flight modes unusable. The 7M GPS module also had difficulty acquiring satellites in a timely manner, and most of the time didn't find enough to use GPS assisted modes. Here is the third and current version. The biggest issue I addressed here was vibration and interference which tends to cause bad video, FPV static, and poor flight characteristics. One. GPS module. I replaced the 7M GPS with a Neo M8N that provides plenty of satellites. I ended up using 3M tape and a craft stick to get the GPS away from the battery power cables that caused compass interference in flight. It also is safe between the two rear arms from crash damage. 2. Vibration isolator design. To address the issues listed, I built this vibration isolator platform. It is constructed of wood, steel cables, and terminal blocks. This also pushes the camera a bit more forward in hopes to avoid seeing the landing legs in the video. 3. VTX Location I moved the VTX to the platform to increase weight and get it further away from the interference sources. 4. Camera Choice Because I found a great deal some time ago on a GoPro Session 4, this is the camera I'm using. I had to make some modifications to the gimbal so I could put a strap around it. If I could do it over again, I would have bought something with the correct form factor that more easily fits on the gimbal. 
If anyone has some good suggestions for an affordable HD camera for others watching, please leave a comment below. Having a good HD camera can make a world of difference when everything else is dialed in. 5. Gimbal The rubber gimbal dampers and top plate have been removed, and the reset button is now accessible. I added foam to balance the new camera on the gimbal. Balancing prevents the gimbal from being forced off center and pointing the camera a different direction mid-flight. What may change in the future and current issues? I wouldn't be surprised if I still had to reconfigure something in the future. Here are some of my thoughts at this point. 1. Landing legs. I may make these an inch or two longer. The isolator leaves the gimbal a bit close to the ground and causes issues in high grass now. 2. Dialing in the vibration isolator. This is a big topic and it may need further tweaking. 3. Sunshade for the HD camera. This hasn't been a big issue recently, but I may add a shade to prevent the light coming through the propellers from getting to the camera. This has been part 5 of the Build a Camera Drone series. I hope this has been helpful. If you have questions or video suggestions, please leave them below. Now that you're up to date, the next step will probably be looking at wiring and putting the drone pieces together. Thank you for watching.